that one of Australia's most prominent and definitely most respected bands in Kamaka are back from a world festival tour. And I'd like to welcome them to the show. On my right, I have Enrique. And on my left, I have Michelle and Jamie and Jose. And they form the band in Kamaka. Now, congratulations, guys, on your recent, your recent success at the Sarawak uh, Music Festival over in Malaysia. Um, I'm dying to know, how did it go? Well, it was really, really uh, well, the weather, the people, very warm. The music, also the bands that were there, the organisation of the whole festival yeah. was just spot on. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no delays whatsoever. Uh, on top of that, during the day there were workshops and yeah, it was just amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Still a little bit of a high from it. Yeah, yeah. Well, still the well the weather and just mm -hmm. avoiding the winter here yeah. in Melbourne was also yeah. good. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, you guys, what did you all think of the the, the event? Um, well, the the festival was, uh, as Enrique said, there are a lot of different bands there from. Uh, from uh, Africa, there were a few like the. Where were they from exactly? Where? Uh, I think from Zimbabwe. One Zimbabwe, yeah. From Southeast Asia, yeah. from Europe, yeah. from the United States, from Northern Asia, from the Chuva, Mongolia, mm -hmm. then us from you know kind of Australia, South America. So it was a huge mix, and we got to meet a lot of the musicians and jam, and Fantastic. and that was great, yeah. Amazing. And you guys all had fun? Excellent. Um, now, while you're on tour, you were interviewed by MTV Asia. I hope it was a good warm-up for this interview this evening. Jamie? <laughs> yeah, it was, well, it was very over the top, you know, in a poppy sort of way, and they wanted us to, you know, dance around and, you know, hey, like sort of the whole, it was a bit new for us, that sort of MTV thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was still, still a lot of fun. So, yeah. Very well yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Now, also, uh, I know the rule, what, what, you know, goes on tour stays on tour, but uh, I thought you might wish to share perhaps a little bit of gossip with us this evening. For me, it was uh, just, uh, I would have to say that I, I didn't get to sleep much many nights because we stayed all night just sharing music and jamming with the other guys and drinking a bit. And <laughs> a bit. That, that's, that's yeah, quite a bit. And I think same for everyone, you know. Uh, yeah. The Scottish and American bands, you know, they just kept the drinking uh -huh. going, you know. <laughs> but you guys gave them a true South American run for your money. <laughs> yeah, 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 we, we did our best, yeah. <laughs> Good to hear. Um, now, you were voted People's Choice also at the recent festival. Um, can you elaborate on how the music's received globally? Well, um, yeah, it's a, it's always a, a mixed reaction, you know. But I think they, a lot of people in, especially in Malaysia, are hearing our music for the first time, you know. And um, a lot of them are just very curious as to where it's from. But generally, like that, just makes people dance, and you know, they they love the instruments, you know, the pan pipes, stuff like that. And so generally, it's it's been really well received, and you know, really nice to to play in an atmosphere like that, you know, set in a rainforest where people are there specifically to see music, you know, like you walk into this village and, you, you know, there's nothing else you can do but feel in the mood, you know, for, for, some, for some music. So. I can almost visualise it as they're talking about it. Um, also, a recent article in the New Sunday Times Malaysia spoke about the irony and how it's taken some of the band members sort of to get away from your, your cultural roots um, to, I guess, appreciate your homeland. Did anyone wish to talk about that? Well, that, that's the thing when, when you come to a, a new country and uh, all of a sudden you've been living all, all your childhood with all your friends and, and, and stuff. You come here and all, it's totally different. The language is totally different. So all of a sudden, uh, you start trying to identify yourself uh, with the people. And the only way sometimes you can do it is with the music or with your food or with however you can. Uh, and also just trying to find other people that come from your own country or or anything like that. And, and it goes not just here in Australia. <clears throat> uh, a lot of people that have 
gone to America or Europe, any country in Europe, or, or even Australians living in, in Southeast Asia. There's a lot of Australians there. And even now they know what uh, people from other countries go through when they arrive in Australia. It's a diff totally different culture. Um, even though we're very, very similar to Southeast Asians, but there's a lot of things that we're not. Mm. And when we get there, even we have to learn all the modalities and yeah. w however, it, the interaction. Yeah. And, but that's the most important thing, I think, is that interaction, trying to blend in mm -hmm. back again and yeah. somehow be able to do it with something that we, that you know. Yeah, yeah so th that's my experience anyway. And uh, I'm not sure all the guys uh, would, would have gone through something like that. Yeah. Wow. That was very beautifully put. Um, also, I guess for a more serious question, with the present state of political unrest globally, um, do you think music can play a part in bridging bridging cultures? Yeah. Well, what we saw in, in Sarawak, it, this was amazing because there was an Afghani group and there was an American group. Now the, the American group was really funny because they were walking around really scared because they're from America and blah, blah, blah. But then after that, they just relaxed because everybody was like, hey, you're from America, play us some music or this or that. Mm -hmm. And then they went, oh, like this. Then they met the, the, the guys, the other band from Afghanistan, mm -hmm. uh, and they had to say something. So they said, oh, look, sorry what happened. And, and he goes, the Afghani guys go, don't worry, it's not you, it's your government. <laughs> so we're not really into politics or anything mm -hmm. like that, but that's what they, they were saying. Hey, yeah. we're here for the same reason, yeah. let's play music. Mm -hmm. And this is a, another thing that we saw in the festival that it's just amazing how, doesn't matter where you're from, mm -hmm. you're just part of the, the festival yeah. itself, you know? Yeah. So, oh, amazing. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Um, so also, do you believe um, that it's feasible to cross the cultural barriers that exist in Australia and perhaps in the future invite a collaboration with um, Australians, Indigenous people, the, the Aboriginals? What you meant was to our music? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, well, we've never done it and I, I don't think I've seen anyone that's attempted Well, I have, but uh, yeah, but that, that's a good, good idea, actually. <laughs> Truly, like it, it's probably one avenue to explore in the future. Um, but so far, like in this band, we've mainly tried to to kind of grow as musicians um, with our music mm -hmm. a lot, a lot more. So we we haven't really concentrated in any type of fusion or yeah. or anything like that. Uh, as you can probably hear in all our CDs, they're all very traditional. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure you're an inspiration to other Australian musicians. Um, now, I read that Jamie used to skip school uh, to attend some of the shows. As an old school friend of Jamie's, I promise not to tell any of his old students or teachers for that matter. But Jamie, did you want to uh, talk a little bit about following your passion, um, a road that perhaps a lot of musicians would like to take, but maybe don't have the courage? Okay, um, yeah, well, I used, to, I used to skip a little bit of school to play. Um, I was lucky that I had the op that opportunity, you know, pretty pretty young to to play in a, some bands here but I mean my parents you know at the time weren't thrilled you know when I dropped out of uni to to pursue music but I just kept with it and it's never been it's never been work it's it's what I love doing and and if you love it and you're responsible about it you know like the you can live off it I think like it's it's, it's, it's there's hard times but you know now they're now they're super proud and and um yeah so <laughs> again very inspirational um now a little bit about the future i've just been speaking to your lovely manager linda and you're off to vanuatu in september check my diary and i'm free because i believe you you need someone to you know carry the luggage and the sunscreen um now are you looking forward to that experience and also how do you think it compares to performing on home soil here in australia well vanuatu uh, we have, we've never been there. We've been to New Caledonia. I, I'm expecting something similar, but yeah, I can't wait to to go there. Really, you know, uh, I've met a few people from Vanuatu before, and uh, 
I mean, they're very they're French, right? Do they, they, they speak French? Yeah, and uh, I can kind of understand French a little bit, you know, similar to Spanish, so it shouldn't be too difficult. It should be nice. We, we had the choice before we went to either stay in a hotel or stay in homestay, so stay with the locals. And we've chosen to stay with the locals, you know, so I'm really, really looking forward to that, you know, to, to see how it is and, and stay with them. Well, thank you very much. I'm certainly looking forward to the possibility of doing a follow-up interview after the Vanuatu Festival and the many more um, the many more things that you embark upon. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Fuzion Latina. Um, I'd like to wish you all the best with your future endeavours, both personally and musically.